but wait, there's more. There's more. Because he doesn't just say through this man forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. He goes on to say, and by him everyone who believes is freed from everything from which you could not be freed by the law of Moses. So not just forgiven, but freed from all that you could do, all that you could, sorry, all that you could not do in your efforts at law keeping or moral living. It's wonderful. The resurrection it gives us two wonderful gifts: forgiveness of sins and justification before the throne of God. You see, this word that's used here uh, in, in the, the Greek language, it's this Greek word, dikeo, dikeo. <laughs> and it's, it's translated in the ESV as freed. I wonder, does anyone have an NIV or a New King James, and is it rendered a different way? Declared right with God. Uh, if we also look at the NIV or New King James, which apparently no one has today, um, it would say justified. Uh, and so that Greek word dikeu um, is rendered as justified like the other 37 times uh, that it appears in the New Testament. Uh, it's one of Paul's favorite words. And then here we see his first sermon. He uses that word. He speaks about being justified before God. Um, and justification is the act of God whereby God declares the believing sinner to be righteous in his eyes. Uh, we are absolved, we are clear and freed from every charge against us. It's like every sin of ours is taken away. That is forgiveness. But it's as if all of the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ is then copied and pasted into our account. So forgiveness is like, you know, control A, delete. All of our sins forgiven off the spreadsheet. And then justification is like control A, copy and paste. You guys use computers? Um, <laughs> I do. Um, and and it's, like, it's like his his righteousness is credited to us. And so isn't that what we could talk about it in, 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 um, in monetary terms or debt? To be forgiven of your debt means that you don't owe the creditors any longer. But then to be justified means that someone else's bank account is then deposited into yours. Now, say, I'd love to be just forgiven. But like, isn't it great that we're forgiven and justified as well? So Paul writes the book of Galatians. Paul writes the book of Romans to unpack more and more and more of what it means to be justified. But here he says, it's from the resurrection. In Romans chapter 4, Paul writes that Jesus was delivered over to death for our sins and that he was raised for our justification. So Paul says they're connected. There's a hymn that I, I, I love, and there's a line in it that says, the vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. And I gotta say, I love that line. The vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. It, it, it chokes me up more than once. I, I, I think, you know, that's me. That's me. I am the vilest offender and I have been pardoned. The moment of my faith in Christ was the moment that I received my pardon. It's wonderful and it's true. But I would, I would say, as much as I love that song and I love that line, I'd say it's true, but it's not true enough. It's more than just, I've been pardoned, but it's also, I'm justified in God's sight. So Jesus did not come only to forgive us, but we're also justified. So the debt is taken care of and the credit is given to us.